So, dear colleagues, um, I know we are all very tired and you all had a long day, so I'll try to keep you all awake uh, by going through and presenting a new imaging modality, which is called automated breast ultrasound, and we'll also talk about breast density. So what is breast density? There is a lot of conversation about breast density. It is the percentage of mammographic density that is the amount of stroma and epithelial component versus fat in the breast parenchyma. And every woman does not have the same component of epithelial and also of stroma. You can see here on the left um, schema, you can see how much less compared to the right side here, how much less the stroma component is. So you keep in mind that there is a variation among women. And you can see here on the left side, the low breast density compared to the right side here, which is high breast density. How often is? It is very often, it is an absolutely normal situation. About 43% of women in Europe have dense breast. Among this, this number, 36 of them have heterogeneously dense breast, and about 7% of them have extremely dense breast. So why is there a continuous conversation about breast density? It's actually because breast density affects sensitivity of mammography. You can see here in women with fatty breast, we have high sensitivity of mammography. We talked about this earlier. It reaches up to 90%. Look and see here, the cancer is missed. Let's go back. Bring the cancer in, it's not visualized. Even if there is an area of the breast that is dense, a cancer can be missed. Also, women with heterogeneous dense breast, we can see, and it's obvious to see distortions, especially with DBD, but it's more difficult to be able to recognize non-calcified masses. And also, in women with extremely dense breast, it's all much more difficult. According to an interesting study that was conducted in um, 20, I'm trying to remember the year 2010 by Koi, it showed that women that have dense breast are more frequently developing a time of diagnosis, larger tumors that are grade two or three, and it's obviously they're more frequently uh, node positive. And according to this study, the interval cancer rate among all ages, you can see that they're increased. So we have interval cancers, which are cancers that develop between interval screening rounds. And most of the times, those cancers are palpable. They're symptomatic. According to another study by Boyd, he showed us that in women with extremely dense breasts, there is a chance of 18 times higher risk of developing interval cancer, uh, interval cancer between screenings. In addition to the low sensitivity that we have in women with dense breast, we also have, these women have higher risk of developing breast cancer. And how many times higher is the risk? It's four to six times. There are many studies have, that have uh, proven this information. Therefore, there is high demand to measure breast density with both mammography and DBD. And there are softwares, there are uh, particular softwares dedicated that are FDA approved that they provide us with more objective and reproducible density assessment instead of us radiologists trying to figure out if it is you know with visual assessment if it is ACR um, C or D or B parenchyma. We've been working with Volpara software. It provides quantitative reliable breast density volumetric assessment. We only press a button and we get volumetric. You can see here the volume of fibroglandular tissue, volume of breast density in centimeters, and volumetric breast density. So we have more precise information. Also, there are many risk models in the market available to all of us that we are using, and one of them, the most widely adopted, is the Tyler Cusick. You can see that in the Tyler Cusick and also in the BCSC, the Breast Cancer Consortium, breast density has been incorporated as an addition and important risk factor. So what is the definition of personalized risk stratified screening? Just remember, up to now it was screening 
for uh, every woman had the same um, the same strategy of uh, same imaging modality. Now we have individualized risk stratified screening where we take into account the, the individual risk factors to classify women into groups according to their risk of developing breast cancer. And why is this important to adopt? It's because we recognize which women are higher risk. We apply more intensive screening to these women. We also have the chance in many patients to disrupt the tumor progression and also to alter lifestyle in order to minimize the risk. And according to the ACR, American College of Radiology, the, according to the lifetime risk to develop breast cancer, we have three categories. It is the average risk, women that have no associated risk factors, women that have intermediate risk factors, and those are women that have personal history of breast cancer, and also there are women that have dance breast, and also are women that belong at high risk, and those women are more frequently with uh, BRCA patients or two to three relatives of, uh, uh, of having, uh, relatives of having already developed breast cancer. So we have several imaging modalities which have shown an incremental breast cancer detection. DBD is an extremely important imaging modality. It is a better mammogram. It should not be used as supplemental screening. It should be used as a primary screening modality. So this is, we heard uh, a, a perfect lecture by Professor uh, Erikin Eriba just a few minutes ago. I will talk about breast ultrasound. Um, I think tomorrow, I think there's a dedicated lecture, and now we'll talk about automated breast ultrasound. So the current status of handheld breast ultrasound, the traditional handheld breast ultrasound were all used to work with for so many years. With Dr. Wendy Burke, we went through over studies that have included, assessed more than 400,000 examinations. The detection rate in all these patients were two to three cancers per 1,000 women screened. Note that we do not need any intravenous administration or contrast or radioactive material, and also ultrasound is a modality that is easy to use. It is inexpensive. There are several limitations, which though are, you know, um, that have not allowed us to implement uh, handheld breast ultrasound into uh, screening programs. First of all, it is an operator dependent, inconsistent technique. It depends from the operator that is using the machine. It also provides a small field of view. It's reducing reproducibility of images. It needs rigorous educational program. Examination is time consuming. And there's also a conversation about the false positive. This is why there is um, the automated breast ultrasound has been developed. It provides us operator-independent scanning. The scanning is not done by physicians. It's done most of the times either by nurses or experienced technologists. Also, it provides standardized reproducible examinations and less rigorous educational program and education is needed. And this is how the examination is performed. You can see our um, uh, technician doing the scanning. The patient is in, uh, the woman is in supine or supine oblique position. The nipples to face the ceiling and the scan is done automatically. Slight compression is applied and there's a special software that converts uh, the 2D image into 3D reconstructed multiplanar images. You can see here this is the coronal image. So we have a large field of view of 15 centimeter wide. This is uh, almost three times larger than handheld breast ultrasound. So this is the transverse, the coronal, and the sagittal images. And you can see on this slide the three-dimensional breast anatomy starting superficially from the skin, the subcutaneous fat, the fibroglandular tissue, and the breast lobules. So you can we can scan, we can see the breast with the reconstruction image, the coronal image, superficially from the skin, going back posteriorly to the thoracic wall. 
What is the clinical value of the coronal plane? This plane is extremely important to us because it allows rapid and comprehensive information of a large portion of the breast. You see the image, it's like one image, 1,000 words. You get so much information out of it because you have overview of the breast anatomy, breast findings. It also enables us to recognize anatomic symmetry, parenchymal distribution patterns. Also, it gives us exact location of where, if there is a lesion exactly of the finding, if there is multifocal, multi, multiplicity uh, disease. Uh, it allows us to follow up multiple benign masses. We also have a new sign, which all excited. Uh, it is called the retraction sign. It gives us information also about the cogenicity, the presence of dem demosplastic reaction in the surrounding tissue, and also it gives us special. It's, it gives special. Uh, this uh, plane gives special value for breast surgeons because it correlates better with mammography and also with MRI findings. There are, several, um, there are several publications, and the overall detection rate is 2.5, two and a half, almost three cancers per 1,000 women screened, screened. And more importantly, most of these cancers are invasive carcinomas. You can see 90% of them, and they're node negative. Now, comparing ABUS to handheld breast ultrasound, we have equivalent performance. So whatever we are able to detect with traditional handheld breast ultrasound, as soon as you get enough experience, you need a learning curve, you're able to see what you were able to see so uh, up to now with handheld breast ultrasound. Another study from Korea, it's a prospective multicenter study, where ABUS was the primary screening test for breast cancer among women aged 40 to 49 years old. You can see that they reach uh, a high sensitivity and specificity, also the high accuracy and also a detection rate of 5.2 cancers per 1,000 women screened. In order to have to be successful in the implementation of every imaging modality, it is important to keep close collaboration with the patient that does the examination, also with technologist and with the physician. And it is important to apply meticulous application of lotion in the entire area that covers the breast. Also to have uh, appropriate positioning to adjust the depth. It's different the depth for a breast that is thin. It's different for a breast that is larger. And uh, of course, appropriate compression. We should not apply uh, a lot of compression. We have three different levels. It depends if you have a lot of cysts, you're able to compress less. If you have a breast that is uh, not extremely dense, you are able to have more compression. The more compression, of course, the better it is. It is important to correlate with mammographic or DBD findings the same day uh, we do the screening. This is important because correlation between the two findings, you have uh, higher diagnostic accuracy. This is a screening mammogram in a 46-year-old. She did not have any associated risk factors. You can all see that this is a heterogeneously dense breast. There is nothing to recall in this patient. However, she had multifocal disease in the left breast. You can see the first mass. It appears with indistinct uh, borders, margins. It is extremely small. It's located at four and a half o'clock um, position, seven and a half centimeters away from the nipple. In addition to the primary, to the first lesion, there was a second lesion at five and a half o'clock position, a bit larger than the first one. Again, um, these are the DBD slices. The mass is not, the masses are not recognized. These are the correlates of the first and these are the second suspicious uh, masses and the correlates of MRI, sagittal and post contrast agents. These are the first, these are, this is the first and this is the second mass. So these both were uh, classified, assessed as BIRATS4. We perform um, 
biopsy of both lesions under ultrasound guidance, and this proved to be a multifocal invasive lobular cancer grade two. So we keep in mind that it's not only extremely dense breast that does not allow always the detection of breast cancers, it is also heterogeneously dense breast. And this is another case which corresponds, it's a screening DBD in a 44 years old. You can see the slice, the single slices of the right breast. There is nothing to recall, neither on the CC, however, on ABUS at six and a half o'clock position, seven centimeters away from the nipple, and one centimeter away from the skin, there is a suspicious mass. The correlates of handheld breast ultrasound and we perform biopsy. These are the MRI images. This was again assessed as BIRATS4, and uh, we performed biopsy. This was an invasive duct to cancer measuring 0 0.8 centimeters. We do use AI now. It is commercially available for ABUS. It's called QViewCut. Um, it is a company that is located in the States. We have the ability to automatically extract features from suspicious lesions which are highlighted as dark areas or are circle with uh, green circle with uh, green ink. So when we talk we, when we talk about dance breast, it's like we are trying to recognize a ball that we have, a snowball that we have thrown in this area that is full of snow. It's not possible. And this is an example of a mammal that was um, that corresponds to a 42-year-old. She have she had a positive family history. Under her mammal, there is nothing to recall. Another in the left breast and her DBD slices. I'm going through the slices, and look and see what she had. She had a large mass located at 11 o'clock position of the left breast. You can see that it's a BIRATS5 finding. These are the coronal slices. In addition to this mass in the median at 11 o'clock, there was a second mass in the 3 half o'clock position, which, in contrary to the first one, this looked more like benign, circumscribed oval, parallel to the skin. However, biopsy was performed in both of the le both lesions. This is the first lesion which corresponded, histopathology corresponded to an invasive ductal cancer grade two, and the second must correspond to an invasive ductal cancer grade three. So we have to be very careful when we call, talk about dense breast, and also when there is a newly developed mass in any patient and especially if she has a positive family history, undoubtedly it needs a biopsy, even if it looks like a fibroadenoma. Look and see how well circumscribed it is without any increased vascularity. So from the results that we compare the findings between DBD, handheld breast ultrasound, ABUS versus mammography, in 2,000 women, ABUS identified four additional invasive cancers that were not visualized with DBD. This is an example of um, a mammogram in a 43 years old. She had negative family history. In the, there is nothing to recall in both breasts neither on her DBD slices. However, she had a triple negative large mass at two and a half o'clock position of the left breast. And I'm showing you this patient. This is uh, the suspicious lesion, which is marked with AI, with QVUCAT. You can see that it's highlighted with the green uh, circle. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this lesion is because this patient, it was a triple negative grade three with uh, coexistence of DCIS, not associated with microcusifications, one positive sentinel node and genetic testing was negative. Look and see here her preoperative mammogram. There is nothing you cannot really say where the mass was. Of course, we know it's in this area. And look and see the postoperative changes. There was, so we have to be very careful, even if there's only an area of the breast that is dense. Now, according to our study, there was an incremental breast cancer detection for automated breast ultrasound with ABUS of 3.5, three and a half cancers that were detected per 1,000 women screened that were not 
seen, identified even in retrospect with mammography. And there was an excellent agreement between both handheld and ABUS. Uh, there's only one study that has been, uh, according to my knowledge, that has been published. It's a prospective study that evaluated ABUS screening uh, that, were, uh, that was used in screening women with dense breast versus DBD that was published in Journal of Breast Imaging 2020. And this study showed that with ABUS, one additional cancer was detected that was not seen with DBD. And this is an interesting uh, case. It corresponds to a 51-year-old. You can see on her DBD slices that there is an architecture distortion, speculated mass in the inferior central part of the left breast. You can see here on the MLO. And also on the CC slices, there is nothing else seen here. And the mass corresponds. Also, these are her ABUS corona images. You can see the mass corresponding on with, to the finding that was seen with DBD. In addition to this mass, there was a second lesion closer to the nipple that even in retrospect, we were not able to identify it with DBD. This is the first mass, the handheld, and this is the second mass. And these are the correlates of MRI. This is the larger mass, and this is the smaller mass. This was a multifocal invasive lobular cancer grade two. Now, according to the guidelines by the ACR and the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, screening with MRI suggests that annually in women with personal history of breast cancer that are diagnosed before the age of 50 or who have dense breasts. Also, breast ultrasound, if these women are not able to have an MRI, breast ultrasound or contrast enhanced mammography should be considered in these women. And this mammogram corresponds to a 61-year-old. She has personal history of breast cancer. She had been operated at age 45. You can see the surgical clips, which I think they're not used anymore. You can see the post-operative changes from previous lumpectomy. So what will you suggest, a follow-up after a year? Or will you use an ultrasound, a DBD? What would be the first option, or an MRI? We know that MRI in this women, in this patient is, who should be the standard of care. It's the imaging modality that provides more information, detects more cancers, and according to the guidelines that we spoke about. However, she couldn't have an MRI because she was claustrophobic, so we did perform an ultrasound. And you can see the surgical scar here. In addition to the surgical scar, I believe it's obvious to all of you, the speculated mass in the inner part of the same breast that is not uh, due, it's not, it has nothing to do with the post-operative changes. You can see again on the coronal plane and on the, se and on the transverse plane on both acquisitions. This is the left AP that covers, and then you can see the nipple um, in the center of the acquisition, whereas this is the left oblique, and it covers most of the um, inferior lateral part of the breast. You can see the suspicious mass with enhanced acoustic shadowing. So we performed biopsy and core biopsy on the ultrasound guidance, which showed fibrosis. However, further surgical excision was necessary, which showed fibrosis in the invasive ductal cancer grade two. Sentinel node was negative. So we spoke about AI. I just would like to show you some additional two cases, so you can see how this is uh, the CAT navigator image, which is minimum intensity projection. It does not have all the dark areas that, you know, confuses our eyes when we read the ABUS image. You have more clear, more grayish um, image, and it highlights area of suspicion. There are some interesting studies that have been conducted, and one study published in radiology, which included almost 1,500 ABUS images, and it correlated the performance between beginners and advanced radiologists, uh, CAD upgraded malignancies in both beginners and also advanced uh, experienced radiologists, it also detected more invasive cancers than DCIS, and experience uh, readers with CAD allowed, this is important to downgrade, 
benign lesions from Pirates 4A to Pirates 3 to a short interval follow-up. It also reduced uh, the learning, uh, I'm sorry, the reading times, which is extremely important. Now, our results, we have included 160 case, uh, cancer cases. It's a retrospective data where we evaluated the performance of CAD versus two radiologists. And with CAD, 148 cancers were marked, so it reached a sensitivity of 92.5. We had 20 mammograms, 20 patients where the cancers were obscured on mammogram, and in this patient's CAD marked 19 out of 20, increasing the sensitivity to 95%. Further, um, of course, research is needed. This is again how the normal ABUS image looks like, and this is the navigator. This is a small invasive cancer. The navigator image, the minimum intensity projection looks like. And this is another patient. So undoubtedly, multimodality approach is necessary for women with dense breast. Here you can see in this table, it's very busy. I know the, um, the slides, you can, you, know, you, you can hardly see them from far away. But what I would like to highlight here is that um, ABUS and automated breast ultrasound detects have equal performance. We know that MRI and CSM are functional modalities. They need, uh, uh, they need contrast. And also some patients are not able to enter the MRI unit. Therefore, in these patients, uh, ultrasound and op automated ultrasound is a great option. Note that automated ultrasound is not um, is necessary in women that have extremely dense breasts, and you have a chance of performing this patient's um, DBD instead of mammography. It's obviously much better, but again, you need to perform automated breast ultrasound, or if you don't have the option, you can use handheld breast ultrasound. And in this table, you can see the cancer, the incremental breast cancer detection, among all the various imaging modalities that we have in our, um, uh, we have uh, available. Here are, uh, is the summary of the current guidelines from breast cancer screening based on breast density. There is a continuous globally discussion what to do in women with dense breast. Until very recently, from the current USOBI guidelines were issued, where it is suggested that in women aged 50 to 70 years old with extremely dense breast to offer screening breast MRI two to four years. To be honest, I don't understand the four years and the three years. I think it's way too much to diagnose aggressive cancers that develop within six months. But if MRI, this suggests it's not available, ultrasound should be an alternative. And we came here and we added to this a commentary le uh, letter, which I wrote with, along with Dr. Burke. You can all find it at um, European Radiology. There's a change in paradigm of breast cancer screening. There's a lot of discussion with women with dense breast, but what about women with heterogeneously dense breast? They have almost the same risk. Almost, you, 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 know, you also have a lower sensitivity. So, and also, we should talk about the other risk factors besides density, such as personal history of breast cancer, hormone status. So the, all these factors should be taken into consideration in further studies in order to optimize screening algorithms in the era of precision medicine. And with this, um, I would like to close my lecture highlighting that mammography is a standard of care. Uh, in the States, there, there is wide adoption of DBD, which has replaced digital mammography. Again, there is, with DBD, we have a major um, restriction, especially in women with extremely dense breasts, to lose cancers that are not associated with microcalcifications, do not appear as architectural distortions. And those are usually triple negative cancers or sometimes HER2 positive. So great option for all of us is automated breast ultrasound. It provides, it's efficient, provides automated scanning of the breast with multi-planner, um, 
explains we have better characterization of breast lesions. It also allows better reading, double reading, and integration of AI has now become reality. So I would like to thank you so much for your attention and for, you, for staying uh, with us and keeping tools so late. Thank you.